Welcome to Reading Dune, a podcast where we read Dune Messiah. We're reading Dune Messiah by Frank Herbert, and we're talking about it. If you're a Fremen or a first-time reader, this podcast is for you. My name is Caleb Pauls. And I'm Evan Diaz. And together, we are going to read some Dune. Yeah, we are. Da, 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 da. Are you ready for the second chapter of Reading Dune Messiah? Uh, yeah, I already read it, so. Yeah, perfect. That's just really, that's good. That's great. I'm glad that you, if you're really that's awkward. That's what I was supposed you, to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the whole premise of the show, Evan. You read right before we record, and then we go live, and we talk about it. That's right. So I just, I this just hit me, like, literally 30 minutes ago, how, what was our chapter two in Dune? Do you remember who we were introduced to in chapter two of Dune? No, see, okay, I knew I needed to have my copy of Dune with me when we did this one. <laughs> I mean, it's in it's in the book. There's hints to what's happening. God. In like the literary form. Was it the was it uh the, it, the It's your the, favorite character. The fat guy, Baron Harkonnen. Yeah. Sorry, Evan Evan just got his big book down from yeah. his shelf and now is flipping through it. So now he's got both copies of Dune, one in each hand, <laughs> double fists in the Dune. This is what you've this is what you've done to my life, Caleb. Thanks for that. So yeah. one's at a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> double fists in the dunes. Right, All right, right. All right. So yeah. Uh chapter two is where we meet the Baron. And what happens in that chapter? Dude, that was like over a year ago what are you doing to me in two that... questions to make me look bad in a row we okay. just started <laughs> in this chapter or in in dune chapter oh. two oh. he goes oh. over the 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 plan the plan their the... their their scheme to to kill duke Lido and what's his the piter yeah, yeah, yeah. You're on to it. There, uh huh. And he's being sneaky. Yeah, it is. It does feel a lot like this chapter that we just read. Yeah, I titled this chapter "The Plotters and the Plan," and it legit feels the same as the second chapter in Dune. Right, you're introduced to Paul in the first chapter, and yeah. the second chapter it switches, and you're in this weird planet, and this is the it's the people that are plotting, and it's the plan how we're gonna take down the Duke. So this is the plan of how we're going to take down Paul. The Emperor. The Emperor Paul. Muhadib. As JJ here on YouTube is commented, plans within plans within plans. Yes. This is the chapter where we're going to get the plans. So there are four major groups represented in this chapter. They're going to be our bad guys. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. For, you know, all... You know, our bad guys and and bad unquote. women. Right, right, right. Um, what? Who? Who are those factions? Can you name all four? The Bene Gesserit. Bene Gesserit. The guild. The 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 whatever guild. The yeah. guild navigators and uh -huh. such. The space um, guild. The. Tlaylax, the Bene Tlaylax, is that how you say that? Yeah, the Tlaylax. Tlaylax, Tlaylax, Tlaylax. If you want correct pronunciations, this is not the right podcast for you. We will not get them right. Please go to the audiobook for further reference. Tlaylaxu, correct. And then Irulan, what even the hell is Irulan at this point? She's the last pretty much remaining family line of House Carino, the former emperor. Okay, so is that what she would be representing? Here? That's yeah, uh huh. She's the last of the major houses. Gotcha. Everyone else has been beaten to submission by a jihad of radical Fremen devout to their emperor. Um, can we instead of jihad or jihad just start saying? A yeehaw of Fremen. Like yeehaw. Paul's Paul waged his yeehaw across, across the, the across the known Imperium. <laughs> this cowboys of Fremen riding around telling people what's up. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I just had that thought. We can move on from it now. All right. So we have these, we have four people. When where are we? This is a new planet we've never been on. 
Yeah. Okay. We are on the Bene Gesserit home world of Wallach 9. Wa- Wallach 9. <sighs> yes. Okay. 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 I read that and I was confused. I didn't know what it what it was talking about because we were talking about Ix and that also has the Roman numeral for nine, which is X. So I didn't know how I was supposed to read that. Okay. Nine. Yeah. And they are in a, a room designed specifically for pretty much this meeting or a meeting for conspiracy. And it's got a transparent dome in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. And they're all here to discuss. We have the Benny, the Benny Gesserit represented by the Reverend mother guys, Helma Hyam. Yes. We know her. Uh, the Spacing Guild, represented by Edric. Yeah. Princess Irulan represents the Carino family line. And we have a face dancer, our first face dancer, named Skytail. Skytail? Sky, Skytail? Skytail. I like Skytail. Yeah, that's it. Y'all can let us know in the comments what you think, how you think we should pronounce that one. Yeah, I'm definitely wrong. It's Skytail. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just lead with that. Okay, and they're all here to discuss the plot and the conspiracy of how they're going to get rid of Paul, yeah, the emperor. Now, I think we need to just take a step back here already and explain to you, Evan, who the face dancers are. They they did, Saitail did the thing in the chapter. What did he do to, what, what's, what's so special about face dancers? Did you read? Uh, they're like shapeshifters. They can like change the way they look. I can't tell if like they can change like mystique, change the way they look, or if it's kind of like they like push their muscles around so they look like a little different. But um, it seems like they can somewhere maybe in between, like they can make pretty convincing replicas of other people. Right? Yes, correct. Um, down to the sex so they can fully change. Okay. Uh, okay. So mystique. Yes. Okay. But they're also doing it in a weird Bene Gesserit kind of way. You know, they, they control every fiber. It's that weird yeah. kind of thing. Um, but so the Bene Tleilax are a, as of, I know a two species race of humans. We have to remind ourselves. These are all descendants of humans. Okay. Um, and the ta- and the face dancers are the slave race to the master Tleilaxu. Oh, okay. So there's like a, just a bunch of face dancers that are androgynous, asexual. Also, they can have sex; they can go back and forth. They're just it's really weird, but they yeah they can also change everything. Oh, um, mm hmm. Yep, their name comes from the fact that they can change their faces and it appears to dance when they move. Yeah. Um, however, yeah, they can change their sex to look like the people they're copying, so they copy other people that they've seen. However, they're incapable of breeding, which kind of denotes they're like, they can't evolve past, which makes them slaves. Okay. Um, yeah, so... Our chapter opens on the thoughts of our face dancer, Saitail. Right. He's here to uh, relay a murderous plot that's designed by the Tleilaxu to take down Muhadib. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as he's in this meeting and everyone is talking, he's just there thinking. And almost like how he feels compassion towards Paul of what's about to happen to him. Like, this is going to be really crappy for Paul. Yeah. Or this is going to be really crappy for me because I'm plotting against Paul. That's what I was getting. Okay. Well, yeah, he's he's the tool of death in this scenario. Right. He's the one who's going to orchestrate all of it. Like, I have to kill Paul, which is probably not going to end very well for me. <sighs> that's, what, that's what I got out of there. I could have totally gotten that wrong. That's cool. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crappy either way. But I think he feels a little bit of compassion for Paul. There's everyone in this room is plotting for him. And the whole group is kind of like bickering back and forth about 
about so maybe they should use psychic poison. How are they going to knock down the Quizrach Hatterack? Yeah. So the old Reverend Mother is the hostess of this meeting. She's sitting in a floating chair to the left of Sightail. She's in there with her all black robe. And she's almost, it almost looks like she's a little skeleton inside the black robe with silver hair, right. just all old and crinkly. Yeah. And this is Reverend Mother Gai- Gaius Helen Mohayam. Yeah. The same the one. The same who, one from the beginning of Dune. From the box. Yeah. Right. So she's now almost 20 years older than she already was. Yeah, and she's probably risen up the ranks of the Bene Gesserit as well. So yeah. she's only going high. She was already the emperor's truth sayer. She was already pretty high. Right. And now she's like trying to, what are we going to do now? Yeah. Edric, our guild steersman, is now saying something political, kind of sneering back at the Reverend Mother, but he's swimming in a tank. He's in a tank of orange gases. So he spice. Has... He's yes. in a little spice jacuzzi, a little spice sauna. But he's like it's like a fish tank that he's yeah. in. And the guildsman is like this elongated figure, still kind of humanoid. Yeah. But he's got finned feet and and feet and hands. And he's got he's almost got like lenses over his eyes so he can see. And he's and everything just reeks of orange spice. Is it is it kind of like the uh the shape of water guy or like that fish dude from Hellboy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think you're I think you're in the right vein there of what we're looking for. Yeah. It's like a fishy, a fishy fish man. Right. And the only way they can be the guild steersman is by living in this spice. 24-7. It like mutates them for them to live in it. Oh. They like evolve so they can use their prescience to navigate between the stars. Okay. So, again, everyone's bickering. Princess Irulan speaks up. If we go on this way, we'll die of stupidity. (laughs) Princess Irulan still has her, like, royalness. She still is the wife of the holy Muhadib. Right. But she's not the mate. And she was raised as a the princess of everything. Meant to be empress. Bred and born and trained that way. Yeah. But she's not. She's just and she's standing there in her blue elegant whale fur because that's the one export of her home planet as whale fur, whatever that means. Yeah, weird. Space whales, who knows? (laughs) And Sightail is just sitting back observing everything. And finally, he gets called out by the Reverend Mother. Like, are you going to say anything? What are you doing here? Just sulking in the corner. And this opens the door for Sidetail to outline, outline the plot. And he basically says, you should not, what, what, what are we doing here? We should not launch a full frontal attack on Muhadib. Because if we kill him straight up, the martyrdom of his, he would become a martyr and that would be even stronger. Yeah. That'd be way worse for way whatever. Way worse. Trying now he's to do. right. Now we got to. We can't straight out kill him. So now the whole room is just staring at this face dancer. And for this day, Saito has chosen a bland, round, jolly-faced appearance for this occasion. Like Neville Longbottom. From like the <laughs> first movie. Yeah, yeah. Not afterwards, where he gets like. He's got his man bot on. Yeah, like he's, he's just... still a kid. <laughs> before, uh, before he uh, aged gracefully, <laughs> the sword of Gryffindor found him. Before that, yeah. So Skyto demanded the whole room, and he just let the silence just sit there. And then finally, Edric says, "Are you not one of us? Like, what are you doing?" And Saitel responds, my allegiance is not the issue. Saitel keeps his eyes just focused in on Irulan and finally just asks her the question directly. You're wondering, princess, if this is why you came, all those parsecs, risked so much for this bickering. Irulan just nods. Edric took this moment to pop a melange pill, ate the spice. 
or like more breathed in the spice. It's hard to tell what he's doing there. Well, it's said that he's like, he, he's like swimming in it and then he like takes a pill of it and a, then he's going to, he also drinks it. Like he's just con- constantly consuming it in every possible way is, right. is what it seemed like Satale was, was thinking. And well, the best part about this, I think Edric's a little nervous at this point because uh, he really can't, he's got to be really high on the spice so we can see all the things, make sure Muhadib doesn't see them. Right. Cause that's where that's, we're getting there. I think they're going to talk about that, but basically like, because Edric is there and he's, you know, prescient and he's right. doing his doing his prescient mind thing. Wah, 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 um, wah, wah, wah. Paul can't see that moment. Right? right. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's it. So he Edric can sense this this peril in the room, and so he's trying to take more spice. Like, come on, I need to like be my be on my A game here. And Eroin finally speaks up and says, I think it was a mistake to come here. And then you you can almost hear the Reverend Mother like turning her neck, squinting <laughs> at her, like, what are you doing, woman? <laughs> Saito reassured the princess because Edric is here, her husband, the infamous holy Muhadib's ocular sight, couldn't stumble upon these certain events, presumably, of course. Presumably. Uh-oh. Pres- like a lawyer, like me, yeah, presumably. Presumably. Presumably, Irulan says, the Reverend Mother just kind of like just closes her eyes and just like slowly nods like, oh, crap. But she mutters like, no one really knows the true power of prescience. Like, we cannot be 100% certain. This makes Edric defensive. (laughs) And he goes, Uh, excuse me. I have the power. (laughs) I've been doing this. What you mean they don't understand? He's like offended. But he says there are things that there are things in this universe that he can only know by their effects. So he can see the waves of how Paul moves and like avoids those waves and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Like he can't see him, but he can see the effects of him. Yeah. And so there's a little stuff like that. Irulan's just staring at the fish tank. Like, um, hello, what, what's happening here? But Saitel knew what was happening. Irulan was finally seeing what Edric's true purpose was. He's not there to be listened to. It's not about his plan, because he's, of course, trying to pitch all these poisons everything else. His sole purpose is to shield them from the great and powerful Muhadib. Right. Even though he's, like, trying to be one of the... one of the badasses trying to kill him, he's mostly there for that purpose. Yeah, right. right. Uh-huh, exactly. And he's trying to, like, use manipulation to get what he wants, but it doesn't really kind of work. Yeah, because... Everyone else is better at that than he is. <laughs> yeah, he's the right. He has one purpose in, in this group, and that's just to do that. But he's there in the room, and he needs to be there. So Saitel says the future is a thing to be sh- to be shaped. Hmm. Princess Irwan rebuttals. She just stares down this face answer, saying, "People who share Paul's aims and loyalties, certain the certain of it, certain of his Fremen legend legionaries wear his cloak." I've seen them prophesy for them. I've heard their cries of adulation for their Mahdi, their Muhadib. Like he's, ba- she basically says, he controls everything. What yeah. do you mean? But then she starts to pick up the pieces. This is actually kind of about her, and she's on trial in front of this council, and this meeting could be a trap for her. Uh-uh. Whose side is she on? Saitail locks eyes with the Reverend Mother. He could see how they both share the same thought about Irulan. They're testing her on where her loyalties lie. So finally, the big orange fish man, who can't keep his mouth shut, <laughs> speaks up to the princess. Princess, <laughs> I know that you, blah, 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 what's your most desire for the emperor? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the bubbles. The bubbles, <laughs> Caleb. Sorry. Bar, bar, bar. So, the bubbles. Like, <laughs> He basically says, I know what you want. And your one's like, no crap. Everybody knows what we want. <laughs> I want one thing. Everyone knows that. Edric goes on to mansplain to the whole room <laughs> how Princess Irulan basically wants to join them because she'll never share the Emperor's bed and make an heir. 
Like he didn't need to explain that. He just mansplained it to everybody. And like, He's yeah, manfish splaining. <laughs> uh huh. And so basically, she's like, he's like, I see blah, 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 that you will never blah, 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 share the emperor's bed. Blah, blah, blah. And Erlon just stares back at him like, wow. So you see the future and you're watching people have sex. Good job. Like, <laughs> is that what you're into now? Like, big peeping Tom, what's happening? <laughs> Don't need- kink shame the fish man, <laughs> Erlon. <laughs> he is a fish already, as is. <laughs> <laughs> so then, of course, Id- Idric is, of course, insulted and starts yelling at Irulan. <laughs> the emperor is blah, 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 more firmly wedded blah, blah, to his fremen concubine blah, blah, than he is to you. Blah, 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 blah. And the Irulan yells back, but she's in saying, but yet she gives him no air. And now the whole room is like real tense. Like, yeah, there's a. Irulan's, everyone's just really tense. Irulan's tense. The Reverend Mother's tense. Everyone's like, what's happening? And Skytail just, Sightail, sorry. Sightail murmurs to himself, but just loud enough so like everyone hears him. Reason is the first victim of strong emotion. <laughs> Irulan re- regains her composure, but she gives him no air because, and then here comes the admitting, I'm secretly administering a contraceptive. Dun, dun, dun. It's like a very, very uh, telenovela moment. Right, because this whole time. Gives him no air because I've been giving him a contraceptive. <laughs> you know, <laughs> stares into the camera. Camera zooms in real quick. <laughs> and of course, ca- camera then pans over to the orange fish man in the tank who gives oh. the camera a weird oh. smile. That'd not be a thing for the emperor to discover. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> like trying to make himself more valuable. We get it. You have one purpose, dude. Just stick to that. <laughs> the whole room now waits for Irulan to fully say, yes, I'm in. Let's take him down. Right. And Edric starts to rile her up. Right. Restating all of the facts of the situation, how Paul disposed of her father and with his infamous Fremen, he married her just for the throne. He never crowned her empress, doesn't give her a child, but, you know, occasionally lets her sit on the council as if that's a reward of something. And Skytail Skytail tells Irulan to notice. He says, watch, princess. Idric's trying to work your emotions up, but Idric doesn't have the final say in this council of plotters. Mm-hmm. What they need is Irulan's full commitment and like Edric's trying to like manipulate her into it is not going to fly. Like right. you're going up against the most powerful being known in the Imperium. Like you, it, you can't trick her into doing this. She's got to be of her own free will. So Irulan sits down and starts thinking about the bait. If she joins them, it could be maybe possible for her to get what she wants. And that's to fi- found a royal dynasty. That's that's it. No big deal. That's all she wants. Casual. But now she's thinking about the room. Who's in the room? And she remembers the face dancer is there. So Irulan looks up and questions the face dancer. Saitel, it's said that you Tleilaxu have an odd system of honor. Your victims must always have a means of escape. Skytail says, sure, if they can find it. <laughs> then Irulan asks, am I a victim? Both the Reverend Mother and Saitel bust out laughing. <laughs> yeah. Frank even writes in the test the Reverend text that the Reverend Mother like snorted. She yeah. laughed so hard. Like, no, that you you are not the nah. This is not for you. We did not fly everybody here just for you. Edric spoke in a reassuring but calm, fish sexy voice. Princess, blah 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 blah. You're already one of us. Have no fear of that. Blah 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 blah. Don't you already report to your Bene Gesserit blah, 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 superiors? Irvan says that Paul knows, Paul even knows, that she reports to her good Bene Gesserit teachers right. as she is a good Bene Gesserit. So Sidehill gets up and moves closer to the guildsman's tank, talking to Irvan. We of the Tleilaxu believe that in all the universe, there's only one insensate in 
Satable. Set. Oh my gosh. In spit spit over where are we looking? Where are we looking? Side uh speech. We believe the Tlaxu. We of the Tlaxu we believe that in all the universe there's only one insis- insatiable appetite. Insatiable. Insatiable appetite of matter. <laughs> that energy is the only true solid. And energy learns. Hear me well, princess. Energy learns. This we call power. That's that's a lot. Right. So Irwin just questions Saitel straight up. You haven't convinced me that we can defeat the emperor. Saitel admits that they haven't yet convinced themselves that this is possible. <laughs> Irwin then recounts how omnipresent Paul is. Everywhere he turns, Muad'Dib's power confronts them. He's the Kwisar Kadrach. Mahdi of religious zealots, the most powerful Mentat mine in the Imperium. His legions, his legions depopulate planets. He can see the future, and he's got the most coveted genes ever. And this is where the Reverend Mother just interrupts her, saying, We know. <laughs> but we also, the Reverend Mother says, we know about the abomination that is her sister, Aaliyah who also possesses these gene traits. But they are also human, and therefore have a weakness somewhere. Somewhere, somehow. It reminds me of the quote in chapter one, where it's like, they are of human stock. Right. They are still human, and we can kill Paul. We have Aaliyah's, we have the genes still saved if we need them. So the whole room tries to find a weakness. Maybe it's Chom. Maybe it's the Jihad. Maybe even it's Lady Jessica. Maybe we use her as the leverage. At the mention of Lady Jessica, the Reverend Mother says, that traitorous bitch, under her breath. <laughs> She's not real happy with her. Right. Saitel explains that in order for their conspiracy to work, they need a lever to pull. Yes, Evan, you had your hand raised. I just I underlined that that traitorous bitch. Uh, what I might to zone my hands, which trained her like she's like real, like salty about Jessica. Didn't you say that she might be Jessica's mother? Yeah, yeah, that's a rumor in the encyclopedia. Like that's that's a lot of feelings right yeah. there. Yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> a lot of yucky yucky family trauma to deal with. Yeah, that's a lot, and and. We got that to unpack, but there's still like Benny Gesserit honed in. Yeah. Which makes it even more weird how compartmentalized I have to do everything. <laughs> so the room continues to bicker needlessly to Erlon, who is tired of being emotionally manipulated this time, basically just calls out the plan. So Edric, you said earlier, you mentioned a ghost, a revenant, someone who has returned from the dead with which we might contaminate this emperor. Explain. What's the plan? The fish cackles maniacally. <laughs> the Atreides will defeat himself. Irulan's like, shut up, dude. Just say what. Tell me what we're doing. Stop being cute. Just say it. That's Irulan right now. <laughs> so Idric gets really close to the, the, the glass of the tank. A very unusual ghost. It has a body and a name. The body is the flesh of a renowned swordmaster known as blah, 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 Duncan Idaho. The, the blubs for effect. <laughs> known as blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Everyone scoffs. Idaho's dead. Paul mourned the loss of Duncan in my presence. He saw Idaho killed by my father's Sardaukar. Even in defeat? Blah, 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 blah. Your father Sardaukar did not abandon wisdom. The wise Sardaukar commander knew whom they had just slain and knew there exist such uses for flesh and training if one acts swiftly. So then Irulan looks at the face dancer, a Tlaxu Gova. Saitaya looks back at her, exercising his face dancing powers, which allow his face to flow and the flesh to move and readjust. And presently, a slender Jason Momoa looking man <laughs> was in front of them. Edric pointing to Saitaya, a gola of this 
appearance. So then Irulan asks the like immediate great next question. Why don't we just use a face dancer? If you could already do that and look like that, why have we why are we here? Why have we not already executed this plan? And but uh, they they let her know that a face dancer risks exposure if watched too long. Right. So she was like, "Why don't I know that they had the flesh of Duncan Duncan in a in one of these Talaxu tanks?" And Edric said, "That's because the commander who found the body sent the flesh to be preserved. They put him straight to the Blenny Talax, and then suddenly, suddenly died unexpectedly. Oh, it doesn't sound like he he died." Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's dead. He got killed because they can't have anybody know that they have Duncan Idaho's body. Right. So Sidetail returned to his roly poly first appearance. That roly poly is how Frank wrote it, <laughs> and confirms that they really do have a goal of Duncan Idaho. So, you're on ask. So how has Idaho been conditioned? Because with Golas, you have the flesh, but you can can recondition the mind hmm. and make them a different creature Okay, who doesn't know who they actually are. So he doesn't have any of... He's still Duncan Idaho, but doesn't have any of the memories as Duncan Idaho. Oh, really? Right. Is that what they said? Uh, No, but it's a plot point. Okay. So... For instance, they're not getting Duncan Idaho. They're getting a creature called Hate. Yeah. Somebody uh somebody made a some kind of joke in the chat a million episodes ago. They said something along the lines of Evan's gonna hate this. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I was like Okay, that's a spoiler, but I'm gonna pretend I didn't see it. And I just like <laughs> moved on. But it was in the the YouTube comments uh, <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, and then I read that word while I was reading. I was like, "There it is! <laughs> there it is! There it is! There it was!" So they want to know like why? How could they do this? Why did they do this? And side title: What's it slip? Is they know how to do this because they once bred their own Quizrach Hatterack. And the Reverend Mother like whips her head around and says, You didn't tell us that. And Saito's like, You didn't ask. <laughs> so Irulan says the next most obvious question. So, how do you beat your Krizbot Hatterack? And this is where Saitail gives the uh the thesis statement here. A creature who has spent his life in creating one particular representation of his selfdom will die rather than become the antithesis of that representation. And this is where the fish man, Edric, just kind of like cocks his head sideways, looks confused and says, I, uh, I don't get it. Blah, blah, blah. And the Reverend Mother just kind of growls to herself. He killed himself. The emotions are very high in the room, once again. Yeah. The Reverend Mother is pissed that another faction of the universe can make a Quizark cataract without them, which is, that's intimidating to know. They, she does not know as much as she thought about the Benny Tleilax and their face dancers. So she's she's pissed. And Irulan says, ooh, you are devious, Saitail. Saitail thinks to himself, if she only knew how devious. When this is all over, we will possess the Quizrach Hatterack and we will control him and the others will possess nothing. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So, like the Benny Gesserit, Earlier on, one of the control there on Quizrat Hatterack, the plan here for the Benny Tleilax is to possess Paul. Take find the lever for Paul where they can control him. Gotcha. So finally, the Reverend Mother asks what she wants to know, and how did the Benny Tleilax do it? How did they make a Quizrat Hatterack? Saitel explains how the Benny Tleilax dabble. In various is pure essences, pure evil, pure good. How a pure villain is someone who delights in only in creating pain and terror, and that their uses of a pure villain can be very educational. Hmm. Irwan asks if Baron Harkonnen 
was a Bunny Tail Wax creation. That would make sense. He was pure evil, light creating pain and terror. Sightail denies it, of course, saying how nature sometimes can produce creatures as deadly as theirs. But mostly the Bunny Tail Wax create them to study them, not unleash them on the galaxy. Right. Which, I don't know if that's scarier because they just have like planets run by these crazies where they study them like lab rats to see what works and what doesn't. Dang. That's kind of creepy. Wait, they have planets? Wow, whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they at least have one. Okay. Where they grow their people. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> so, Edric is furious at this point. He feels like a pawn in their whole plan, which he kind of is. And he wants to talk about how they're about the plan, about how they want to give hate to Paul and how it's all supposed to go down. All right. And hate is supposed to make it easy for the emperor to awaken that classic Atreides sincerity and finally show Paul how evil he's been this whole time. And if he knows how evil he's been this whole time, he'll just kill himself. Hmm. Because Duncan represents something of his past. He was his best friend, yeah. like a brother. And he knows who Paul is. And Paul wants, he, they want to give Paul that moment where Paul goes, I've messed up. This is not who I am, and he's going to walk away. Yeah. So, that's the plan. Saitao just smiles as he looks around the room. The Reverend Mother has now lost all of her precious emotional control. <laughs> Irlan was now bred for the task of being Empress and creating a royal dynasty, and now she's failed brilliantly, so she's a giant failure, feels like that. Edric's just a magic hand, so they might just conceal and distract. Sightail held all the power in the room. Irwan continues, so hate is intended to poison Paul's psyche? More or less, Sightail says. The Quizzerot can be easily manipulated. Chome will follow prophets, and the rest of the power groups will be annexed in the name of morality and progress. So Irwan asks about the sister, Aaliyah. This is where Saitel says that hate is a multi-purpose goa. What do you think hates other purposes besides reminding Paul that he should be a good human? Um, well, it's obviously being sexy. <laughs> they did cast Jason Momoa for a reason. All right. Because now uh, Aaliyah's how old? She's, well, yeah. 13, three, 14, 15. Like, yeah, 15, 16. In She's the, in peak. In the throes of. Adolescent hormones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then suddenly Jason Momoa shows up and he's like, hey, girl. Well, yeah, with his maleness and his mentat Zen Sunni mind has been his with whole his, purpose. Uh, with his sexy sexiness and the very sexual sexiosity of mm -hmm. his. Uh, and he can hold a conversation. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> so the question asks, what if Paul asks, hate the truth? If, he, if Paul asks, hate will tell him the truth. But he needs to know that there's an escape door left open for Paul. And he will know where the trap is. Hmm. Just like his father knew where the trap was. Right? Duke Leto knew he was walking into a trap with Dune. Yeah. And what did he do? He walked into it anyway. But he walked didn't know in. like where where it was. Right. It's even more obvious now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Floyd on YouTube says, hate, more like hot. Bow, tick -a -bow, bow. <laughs> so the Reverend Mother is unsure about using a Mentat like this, especially a Gola Mentat, as handsome as Duncan Idaho, but this group of conspirators need each other. Right. They're going to unleash that into the world, you know? <laughs> right. That's what they're going to do. 
Right now, the Atreides has a monopoly on spice. The guild needs the spice. The Bene Gesserit needs the spice. Everyone needs to get more spice. And it's under the thumb of the Fremen. So how do they get past the Fremen? Saitail says the Fremen are civil, educated, and ignorant. They're not mad. They're trained to believe, not know. Belief can be manipulated. Only knowledge is dangerous. Irulan asks the question she wants to know. But after all this, will she still have something to father a royal dynasty with? Like, all right, we still need Paul to put a baby in me. The old-fashioned way to make this work. So how's that going to happen? And Edric smiles, and Saitel just replies, something. Edric pipes up, it's a means to end the Atreides as a ruling force. So, yeah, side take will see that Irulan was beautiful. She was great. She had all the training in the world. She was beautiful, intelligent, and it was a female that could never be his. So yeah. it, with that thought, he says, hmm, oh, well, perhaps I'll copy her for another, which is just twisted and gross. Just like the end of the 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 Baron Hark, uh the Baron Harkonnen chapters. He would always just say one last thing that was just awful and creepy and terrible. Yeah, like, well, yeah, didn't need to take it that far, but you're exposing who you truly are. Okay. So, and that ends chapter two, our our introduction to the villains chapter. Yeah. Well, so uh, basically they're making a Jason Momoa level of sexiness meant at super computer sex robot. Yeah. To, <laughs> to like overthrow the Atreides. Yep. Awesome. Right. Sounds like a good time. So that's what's going to happen. That's the plan. We have something to look forward to. Um, yeah. He's there to expose Paul. And to seduce Ex and to expose himself to Aaliyah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank you for reading Dune with us, Dune Messiah. We appreciate Thank you for just sticking and hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Oh, man. Man. Make sure you follow along um, on Twitter at Reading Dune. In the show notes, we should have links to our Discord. Come hang out with us in Discord. And uh, we also have our Patreon on there. If you're watching on the video, we have names that pop up at the beginning of every episode. Those are people that are contributing to keeping reading Dune chapters coming. Yeah. So we just want to say thank you to everybody who has helped out. And with that, I just want to say, stay spicy, my friends. Peace. Stay spicy.